Hello, we would like to welcome you to tonight's Finance Committee meeting for May the 8th, 2023. Before we get into tonight's business, we have an update coming up at this time from our Eastern Oklahoma State Spelling Bee, and I think we have some representatives who will stand at this time and make a presentation before we get into the business. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council, for having us here tonight. We were honored to be able to host the Eastern Oklahoma State Spelling Bee here about two weeks ago at the Muskogee Civic Center. We had near 2,000 attendees at the event from all over the state of Oklahoma. We had almost 200 contestants competing in one evening, and it went a long evening. <laughs> you all probably saw that later in the paper. It went so late it wasn't able to get into the paper for a few days. But it was outstanding, outstanding. It went 33 rounds, and we're, we've been called and checked. We may be breaking a national record for that, a national record for spelling bees going that many rounds, even compared to the national spelling bee, so we're proud of that. So at, at, anyway, I just wanted to debrief some about that, about our event and how well that went. We're just extremely pleased <coughs> with our 96 sponsors of our event. At this time, we would like to recognize the city of Muskogee uh, in honor of your platinum sponsorship of our spelling bee. So who would like to come down and? Everybody. <laughs> All right, that's what I thought. If you're standing at this time, we'll have our invocation stop followed by a flag salute. <laughs> Dear Lord, once again, we come thanking you for the gift of another day. Just thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon each and every one of us. Ask that you would just look upon your city leaders tonight as we come together to make decisions for our community. Bless all that we do to be in your will and in your way. These are many of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Finance Committee agenda item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of April 10th, 2023, or take other necessary action. After reviewing the minutes, are, any, are there any corrections or additions to our minutes? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve our minutes. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Perlin Boyati Craig? Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery? Yes. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Jones? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments April 1, 2023 <coughs> through April 28, 2023, or take other necessary <coughs> action. Do we have a report from the Purchasing Committee? Yes, the Purchasing Committee did meet this afternoon, and we approved the claims. I move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our claims list. Any discussion? Roll call, please. 
Perlyn Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. <coughs> Item number two passes. <coughs> Item number three, please. Hold a public hearing to discuss the City of Muskogee budget for fiscal year 2023-2024 and take other necessary action. I would like to first open the public hearing and at this time I yield the floor to Mr. Miller. Thank you, sir. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Rigney, as you come in, would you mind bringing me the uh, projector uh, advancement button? Thank you. And, and we are going to spend a little time on the budget today. And I want to say a little time because this is kind of the tip of the iceberg. What we're going to see tonight is uh, hopefully a, a relatively brief presentation of, of hours and hours of work by the city council and by staff. Um, I want to give special thanks to uh, Dennis Reed and Alicia Glanz. I don't see Alicia here, but uh, our treasury team um, that has have, have spent a lot of time, uh, Jennifer Sweezy, and then all the department heads uh, put a lot of work into getting the, the big picture budget together. And then the council spent a whole day at a retreat and has been giving us feedback for months about what we want to see in the budget. Kind of culminates today in what we hope is about a 99% budget maybe 100. We tried to get it where we want to be. Um, and so this is our opportunity to have that public hearing for the council to publicly review it. Um, we sent documents out um, last Thursday. Um, and so uh, that was, uh, we are about six weeks ahead of our, uh, of our state agenda, uh, of the deadline that we have to be. Um, and we rushed to get those done. And so as we did, we found some glitches in the system. Um, and so as we go through there, we may point those glitches out. You know, I may have some questions about the glitches in the software. They're not really very material, but we can definitely talk about them. And anything that's different now, um, we'll be happy to address later as well. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we talked about the process. We started in February. Department heads really started in earnest in March. So we've been at it about two months. I can't say enough uh, about the council's presentation, how much hard, how hard they've worked to get us to this point as well as staff. Um, so our goal is to have our public hearing today and uh, our next council meeting, our last council meeting before the statutory deadline is May 22nd. And so we hope to get enough feedback today to have a full budget presentation ready uh, on May 22nd. So here's how we start the budget. I want you to notice <clears throat> some very good news is we have more money than ever to spend on city services and not by a little, but by a lot. By how much? This is our first $100 million budget um, that we have ever had. And so, uh, Council, as I go through this um, in your packet, in your books, <clears throat> your budget books, um, the number that you're going to see referenced on these slides is in the bottom right of the uh, budget books that you uh, that you've handed out. So this is on page five where you see this summary. <clears throat> Again, the biggest budget we've ever had in history, and what that means is we're going to be able to do more good for our citizens than we ever had before. In particular, our general fund and our special revenue and capital project funds are the largest they've ever been, and those are, are the ones where we do um, the, the work of the people. This is uh, the capital projects funds where we're doing our street projects, where we're doing our water and sewer projects, or we're doing our drainage projects. Uh, as well as the general fund is where we pay our police, pay our fire, pay our public works officers. So that's on page, page five. <clears throat> Pardon me, you get to page six and you see our strategic initiatives. Uh, more money than ever for drainage projects, which is a council uh, initiative they wanted us to address in this budget. Council asked us to look at water quality and water line replacements. That's funded uh, more than ever in this budget. Uh, facilities maintenance and capital budgets both increased dramatically. We'll touch on that a little bit more. We have the largest ever economic development budget for the city with more money than ever for incentives. Uh, and, and on top of those incentives, we have a separate uh, bucket of a, a million dollars of incentives for housing available. Um, we've worked with our tourism partners, public safety, uh, and we've got some other uh, quality of life projects for our younger citizens because that was important as well. The details on our strategic initiatives are on page 12 of the big budget book. Um, and the council has heard them many times. Um, but those are the big picture items, and we'll address them in detail as we go forward. Uh, council to ask for a position summary. Tell us about our employees, and this is a, a big, again, big picture summary. It's in your book on page 14. 436 full-time employees at the city. Between police, fire, and public works, it's almost three-quarters of them. 296 of our employees are doing what I would call pretty much direct service 
to uh, the, the public in ways that only cities can do with the police, fire, and streets, water, sewer, uh, very important things to make our city run. So when we get to page 16 through uh, 19 in your book, you see a couple of other numbers, and these are all of our funds, not just general fund, uh, and not, uh, this also includes some of the, uh, some of the other uh, important funds that we do, including the Muskogee Municipal Authority, and what you see there is the revenues are less than the expenditures, and that's not usually what we try and do, but what, we, what that means is this year we have a lot of capital projects that have come to fruition. Sometimes you have to do engineering on a project, you have to get it all ready, and then when you get to actually spend it, the money starts going fast. And so we're excited that we're going to be able to do more projects than ever this year. Um, I say that because we go into our budget principles for our operating budgets, we do want to have our expenses less than our revenue. We want to budget for good surprises, and so what I mean by that is that we try and project, project our revenue relatively conservatively. We don't want to be surprised by having uh, low, low revenue, uh, and that would cause us to have mid-year cutbacks. Um, and we try to budget for realistic expenses, and we'll see some of that a little bit later, that we've, we've uh, made some of our expenses more realistic. Strategic initiatives have the priority. If we have an extra dollar, it goes towards those priorities. And our mid-year budget re review is very important. And so I want to talk just a little bit about why that is. Um, it, we do something different than a lot of other cities. It's considered a best practice, and other cities copy us um, and want to see how we do it. The short version is, at the end of the fiscal year, if we have spent less money uh, than we took in, we have a time to appropriate that in the middle of the budget year. So our council gets to budget twice a year instead of once. And that is proved very fruitful because only the council can decide where that money goes, and they only go to strategic initiatives identified by the city council. And so we're very proud of the way the council has set that budget up. Um, again, our budget principles, um, the number five and number six, we usually try not to use carryover for operating funds. We usually try not to use the reserve. Uh, this year we have two uses of the reserve um, specified by a direction of the council. Um, for uh, replacing requests for foundation revenue and increasing our economic development budget. Um, the other revenue projections were pretty much on par for what we've seen. Our general if, uh, fund expense assumptions, when I say assumptions, these are things that we can't really necessarily deal with. Uh, we can't really say no to not paying for the 911 center increase. Um, last year we used some reserve funds for Civic Center. This year we're just going to pay for that. Uh, more realistically, our health insurance premiums are going up. They do every year. We just have to start our budget knowing that, appropriately budgeting for fuel prices and our operational initiatives, as well as some new initiatives that the council did. The number for the gala is probably a little high. The, the council has um, come up with some alternatives, but that's the placeholder that we've got for now to probably uh, keep these things moving forward. So those are kind of the expense assumptions. Again, this is on page 20 through 22 in your budget book. Um, expense notes, inflation, utility costs, credit fees all up. Um, inflation, especially on construction materials that we'll see uh, in operations of, uh, of our utilities or in public works especially. Um, even some of the items on the agenda today, the, later on you'll see that we're buying. Um, other initiatives of the council include employee morale and compensation. Um, I've made this joke before so the council won't laugh, but we did have last year the largest raises in digital history. As far back as our computer system goes, we were able to give a good salary increase last year. This year's budget does include raises for employees again. Um, other budget highlights included in the general fund budget. There's the list of the foundation programs that we're going to fund um, out of our reserve rather than from the City of Muskogee Foundation this year. Um, funding retirement reserves, a digital transformation initiative, um, which we're excited to tell you more about as the year goes on, and a matching grant fund, which helps us get a, a federal dollar or a state dollar um, for, a, for every city dollar, or hopefully a lot of times even more than a dollar for a dollar. These are our expenditures by department. <laughs> this is where that $44 million goes. Um, you can see police and fire uh, together, 34%. When you add in public works, um, you get up to 61% of our budget just with those three areas. Public works and engineering. Engineering is our, our old-fashioned term for water and sewer um, operations at the city. So uh, that's where our money goes. That's on page 23 and 24 of our budget book. Other general fund things, um, we, have a, uh, we transfer money to a lot of different other funds, including economic development, 
um, a demolition fund, uh, some partners like the King Center and Muskogee County Transit, uh, among others. So those are all included. Um, uh, the partnerships that we've had in the past, we've kept them going and included in this year's budget at the same level. So the general fund is driven by strategic initiatives. It's driven by the revenue and expense assumptions that we've been through. It does have funds available for raises. It has conservative expense management. <clears throat> this is how it breaks out for uh, personnel versus operations. Um, you see about 70-30. About <clears throat> and again, personnel is sometimes the service we provide. Uh, if we provide a, a police officer, we uh, provide a firefighter, um, that is the service to the community a lot of times, and you'll see that represented as a personnel cost um, in our budget. Um, <clears throat> a few other budgets that we want to highlight. Uh, again, we're spending, um, going through this, this pretty quick, considering all of it, but there's a lot of time that's gone into it. Uh, the Civic Center, this, we talked a bit earlier, has uh, a $300,000 transfer from general fund, 50000 from economic development, uh, and then we have, uh, ca that will include and help pay for capital funding for new external signage and interior digital signage as an initiative this year. Uh, Hatbox Arena um, has their budget um, decreased as far as their transfer, uh, but their operational subsidy is lower, but they're still going to be able to operate uh, and keep doing good events out there. Uh, Love Hatbox Sports has seen an increase in the general fund um, transfer, uh, and we're budgeting for a higher increase for maintenance and possible outsourcing of operations. Um, capital improvements, uh, our 2019 CIP capital improvement sales tax um, had a lot of money set aside for projects, and we're spending that as the voters have, have wished on police, fire, demolition, 911 center, and um, the big project this year uh, will be about a million dollars spent towards uh, facilities improvements. Uh, we also voted on street improvements um, and in 2019, and this year we're going to see uh, our biggest expenditure ever uh, from this uh, CIP budget as well as others, but $13 million. We'll be finishing up the northwest and southwest zone a little bit after June 1. We'll start the southeast zone, uh, country club widening, uh, U.S. Highway 69, highway coordination, um, Smith Ferry right-of-way acquisition. Um, the list goes on and on about our street projects. Moving forward to page 76 in your book, um, American Rescue Plan. Um, we got two, two, pardon me, two grants for that. A competitive award and an allocated amount. Uh, we won't spend a lot of time on it, but the, the competitive award would be to a lot of cities uh, that were bigger than us or had more resources. So I'm very proud of our staff for putting together a, a great grant application. And I'm thankful to the City of Muskogee Foundation for putting the match up that helped make our uh, our uh, grant request attractive. So that's going to be a $4 million project related to our water, water quality and raw water line. We also have um, ARPA money that was allocated to the city, about $6.5 million. We have about $3 million in projects not started. The main projects are a water meter project um, and some uh, housing incentives. And this money must be encumbered by the, uh, December next year. And so this budget does recommend to meet some of the council's initiatives that we reallocate money for uh, other ARPA-approved projects. So those two that you see listed, John T. Griffin Water and Sewer and Langston Park Splash Pad, we applied for American Rescue Plan grants from the state. Uh, those did not come through, but we do feel like it's an appropriate use for our money to do those projects and get them finalized. <clears throat> we move forward to page 83. Um, we'll talk about our public safety. Their primary purchases this year in fire are for uh, emergency radios and bunker gear. You're going to see that, even some of that tonight. Or police. It's for tactical helmets and vests. And approximately a million dollars in funding for new vehicle purchases. And so why it's approximate is it really is going to be um, a, an allowance for debt service. We've got dedicated funding that allows us to go borrow money um, over the next five years. And so, depending on what the interest rate is, it would be kind of how much money we have to, to buy the vehicles with. Um, economic development. The council gave us a lot of feedback about how to do economic development during our, our retreat, and this is reflective of that. Uh, again, the biggest budget ever. Uh, our ordinance calls for um, 60 and 40% uh, in those two accounts, and here's how that breaks out. Uh, primarily, this uh, allows our partners at the port to have uh, funding at that level, Main Street, Muskogee, um, and then contract services uh, and events in the Civic Center make up the bulk of that operations account. 
Uh, and then our opportunity account is really where we have our incentives. So we have our current projects, urban renewal area uh, on Shawnee, uh, the three corners at Shawnee and US Highway 69 that have some debt service that we continue to pay out of here, but we have an opportunity for additional, uh, additional funds. <clears throat> Tourism, uh, we project the revenue to be about the same as we budgeted this year. Uh, this again reflects what the council decided or gave direction at the, uh, at the retreat. We zeroed out a couple of items. Um, you see the zeros there uh, and moved some of that to uh, different budgets and increased the budget for the tourism authority by about $4,000. Um, and that's all reflected on page 127 and following. <coughs> we do have a new budget. We haven't talked a lot about this this year. And so we have uh, an opioid settlement that we have reached and the council has voted to receive and make these settlements. Um, this money can only be spent in very narrow ways and we're working with Katrina and the city attorney's office to define those ways uh, that we can spend it to help offset the um, ravages of opioids in our community over uh, a period of time. So we just wanted to point that out that we will have that funding available for that purpose this fiscal year. <clears throat> we have um, a budget set aside for capital outlay is what we call it. It's how we take care of uh, big picture projects, maintenance um, and facilities. And so we have increased uh, the largest amount out of this budget that we've had in a long time for maintenance of our facilities. We've got new street equipment and you can see uh, the big picture list there. We also, I'm working with another capital outlay budget on page 83 are working on a, part, a project for Rotary Park, uh, getting a new parking lot there. There's not currently one there. We have set aside at the council's direction uh, $200,000 to do an e-sports facility um, to get really high-tech connections in computers and gaming consoles to allow uh, younger people uh, in our community to participate at the very highest level uh, in e-sports. We're excited about adding that to our amenities that are offered to our citizens. Um, another thing, uh, another budget um, that you'll see on page 161 in your books is uh, a, a, a budget devoted just to Spalding Park. It's funded by a private trust, and we're very grateful to our friends at the Yaffe uh, Trust for doing that. We're going to spend uh, this year resurfacing some tennis courts and making them dedicated pickleball courts um, that's been needed in our community, and we're excited to be able to do that this, this year in our budget. Uh, page 166, Special Projects Fund. You have housing incentives, um, comprehensive plan, and police vehicles. This is, a, again, the, what we talked about, the, the council funds in kind of November, December every year. And these are longer term projects. They're capital projects usually. They sometimes stretch over years. Um, the police have decided to roll this into their new purchases instead of trying to do a one-off kind of purchase um, that they had done before. Um, there were some questions. We wanted to talk about the stormwater fund in particular. It's on page 175 in your booklet. It is the largest budget ever for that fund uh, that we're looking to expend more than $3 million this year. There are some of the major projects that you're going to see, but a lot of times um, what people see is that there's some smaller projects that need attention as well. And so these are some priority ones, that, some of which we've already started, uh, but we will have others through uh, through the year as as they crop up, but we've seen that the council has placed a high priority on drainage and we put our largest budget ever together for that purpose. Our uh, MMA capital budget, you'll see on page 200, um, we talked about this, this is specific money set aside for capital projects for water and sewer. Um, and this year we're spending um, a large amount on water plant improvements as well as uh, water leak and sewer contracts to try and make sure that if there's an issue, we can uh, deal with it quickly um, and get uh, the service restored to citizens as quickly as possible. So <clears throat> these are our strategic initiatives. We've talked through a lot of them, uh, including that subset there about how it's addressed in this budget and also included in these initiatives, employee morale, police and public safety. We're gonna have a little bit, uh, a little bit more detail um, so we can talk about what happens in those specific infrastructure ones that the council's asked for us to address. Uh, for water quality, we have uh, $17 million in progress uh, or completed, and that is to replace water lines, it's to rehabilitate our water towers, 
and to improve the water treatment plant. And so making uh, these improvements, these are all endorsed by the Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality. They say if we do these things, it's going to make our water better uh, in a way that they expect us to do. And so these are all approved and engineered by the state and we are making progress on them. But as you, uh, as you know, when you're making a cake, um, it, when you're halfway through, it's not all the way done. So we spent about $11 million so far. We think in the next 18 to 24 months, we'll probably get the, the rest of the projects finished. There's one of the projects is on your council agenda tonight, Interconnect C is directly related to this project to make our water quality better. Uh, so we're always working on it and we're making progress and it's in this year's budget as well. We've got additional funding this year. We talked about the water meters. We talked about new pumps at the plant and we have $2 million to replace leaking lines um, as we go forward. Uh, and again, there's a, a, an item about replacing leaking water lines on your budget tonight, uh, on, your, uh, on your committee agenda tonight. So all those are funded out of a few different budgets and you see those there. Um, building maintenance, structural integrity as part of our infrastructure plan. The capital outlay budget helps fund that. We've raised our capital outlay commitment to building uh, maintenance about 80%. We've raised our general fund commitment to building maintenance, 38%. We're spending all the dedicated CIP money in this coming fiscal year. Um, but we know that's also not enough. Um, we look at this, uh, Jennifer's walked you through this slide before and I won't make her do it again, but the idea is that we've got a lot of our money committed over the next few years to do some major projects and we know it's not enough and I know the, the mayor's called the special council meeting on the 22nd for us to talk about future opportunities to deal with facility and other opportunities for, for, for that. So I won't spend a lot of time there. Um, road and streets, we've talked a little bit about that as well. Important to know that out of our new $24 million street projects, $6 million for each uh, quadrant of the city, that the City of Muskogee Foundation is matching us dollar for dollar uh, up to $2 million a year for six years on that sales tax. And that is unheard of in other cities that we are able to basically double our tax dollars. So I want to be grateful to the foundation and grateful to the citizens of Muskogee because what they're seeing uh, in these projects that we're doing uh, already and are going to do this summer and even into next fiscal year is because uh, of the foresight of this council and uh, of councils that have come before that have set up that foundation as well. Um, so I, I do want to be excited about that, that we've got that going on. And specifically, again, we talked about more than $13 million worth of street projects. I won't go through those again. Our public image, uh, we have money set aside for motel demo, community cleanup, trail maintenance, uh, image project implementation, economic development. We've talked a little bit before, but a couple of things we haven't talked about, aside from the largest economic development budget ever, is we do have half a million dollars roughly in uh, street grants, uh, Main Street grants through the foundation to the um, uh, Main Street Muskogee organization as our partner. Um, we have ongoing projects that we talked about uh, in the URA and US 69 and Shawnee. Um, we have our housing incentives, and depending on how we adjust, the, uh, the ARPA money, that, may, that number will go closer to a million. And the opportunity account is at $900,000 already and we will just be adding to that through this appropriation through this year. So we're really doing good on, on economic development opportunities. Family and quality of life, we've talked about um, uh, some of those things. We haven't spent a lot of time here talking about a water park upgrade, but we should have construction starting on that. Uh, this fall after we close, uh, after Labor Day when the park closes, we should be ready to start construction relatively soon after that to update those. We have talked about Langston Park, Pickleball, um, and eSports, and we should have construction on Grandview Park as well this fiscal year. Housing, we've talked about those already. Um, we've talked about uh, employee morale. Um, we do want to mention, we do have pay 100% of our health premiums for each and every one of our employees for health insurance, and not a lot of organizations do that. just want to pause here to thank the council for doing that for each and every one of our employees. Um, some of our jobs, uh, you know, we have jobs all across the spectrum, and some of our blue-collar jobs, that's a very rare thing that, that, that this benefit exists, and we're very proud, and it, it helps us in recruiting to be able to do that. Um, we do have money available for employee increases. We've talked about the police and fire um, opportunities and the, where those are found in the budget. So as we kind of wrap up, there's just more money than ever for our drainage projects. There is increased funding for water quality and water line replacements in this budget. 
uh, facilities maintenance and capital budgets both increased dramatically. We do have the largest economic development budget ever, more money for incentives, more than a million dollars for housing, helping our tourism partners, addressing public safety priorities with available funds, and new funding for quality of life and family fund. So I'm proud. I'm proud of the, the direction the council's given. I'm proud of our staff being able to implement it to this degree. Um, and I, we are kind of at the crossroads now. So we've had our public hearing. We are looking for uh, input. Our next, on May 22nd, um, this is our last council meeting before uh, the statutory deadline. Our June meeting will be after the statutory deadline. So we made sure we did all our work early so that we could get everything in place uh, before most every city in the state, quite frankly. Uh, but we want to be ready on May 22nd. So that being said, um, we, we want to know what needs to happen between now and May 22nd to make sure that you're comfortable with a budget that you can pass and we can move forward with the city of Muskogee. Thank you. We have no citizens to sign up to speak, so we will close the public hearing at this time, but the floor is open for any discussion from council. Uh, Mr. Mayor, may I be, uh, Deputy Mayor might be recognized. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in the <clears throat> budget, uh, I would like for him to explain uh, the redevelopment authority got a zero budget this year. Can you explain that, please? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to ask our, our treasurer, Dennis Reed. He, uh, he and Jennifer put together the budget last year in my absence, and I think it's tied together between last year and this year, and I'll be happy to help him address it as well, but he's got a good answer for you there. Yes, uh, last year uh, there was a, a small mistake in the budget book. It shows that there was a budget last year, but there wasn't. So basically what we did is we were trying to simplify some of our processes, and we were transferring money into the MRA fund to pay for other things like tourism. Uh, so this year and last year we don't no longer do the transfer. We just pay tourism directly out of the tourism fund. Uh, there were some civic center uh, operations that now that they are under the MRA, we didn't have to transfer the money directly to the MRA fund. Those uh, expenses are just paid directly out of the civic center fund since they are now umbrellaed under the MRA. So the, the MRA still exists. The money that went there is still being expended, uh, but we still have the MRA fund, of course, to, to help house debt service. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I think that um, <clears throat> to answer Mr. Miller's question about what we need to go forward, I think that um, I don't think we need a motion. I just think we need to be certain that all of us over the next couple of weeks make certain that our um, residents over the community understand the benefit of what they're getting. Um, I think that I'm comfortable when we come back on the 22nd at that time to make a motion that we adopt a budget, but I think until then, we do what we can to advertise and publicize to our residents uh, what they're getting. And um, Mike was talking so fast, I almost made a motion for him to catch his breath. Um, <laughs> but I want to take this opportunity to thank him and his staff because they did have a uh, tedious task working with nine of us to be certain that all of the objectives and priorities were met. And um, certainly thank you guys for that. Thank the council uh, who also um, you know, had their own specific priorities and objectives that they needed to get met. And I think this is the first time in a long time, uh, with all things considered, with the inflation across the country, across the globe, um, that nearly 100% of their priorities and objectives were met in this budget. Uh, we haven't had that in quite a long time, so I want to thank uh, you and your staff and thank the council for their patience with everybody while we went through this process. All right. Any other discussion? I just had a couple more. All right. Uh, also, with the head box uh, sports complex, I know we're talking about improvement out there. I just thought that the budget was a little low for improvement uh, from past years. And then also with housing, I think that uh, in the presentation, you showed 1 million and you showed 1.8. I think we should move towards the 1.8. We have a lot of people that's looking at investing in the city of Muskogee, so I think that that should have some availability there. So Thank just, you. yeah, just to be clear, the 1.8 is kind of where we're at today. And if we take, uh, that's including uh, ARPA money. And so if we take uh, the two ARPA projects, um, that will reduce us to still more than a million. And, and what, I've, uh, what I would suggest and what people have told me is, 
you know, that's a million dollars that we have now. If we have a projects that come in the future, we may be able to use special project fund money or economic development money or other money when there's an identified need as well in the future if it exceeds that amount. But um, just to be clear why that difference is, we kind of, uh, the, the 1.8 is more related to uh, pre-budget, and if we do those two projects, uh, then it'll be closer to 1 million, about 1.2. When you say two projects, which projects are you referring to, Mike? I'm sorry. Sure. I, I was talking fast, as the mayor pointed out. So I'll, <laughs> I'll go back here. Um, and it should be, uh, I tried to get familiar with this. I, hopefully I won't scoot past it. There we go. So right here, um, these were two ARPA projects that the council already approved, John T. Griffin Water and Sewer Line. In the Langston Park splash pad, we applied for state match to our projects. We did not get that state match, and so we do feel like it's an appropriate use of ARPA funds. And to get these projects done, we feel like, uh, given our timeline, again, that we've got about a year and a half to get that a plan for those projects. Again, if we don't have, uh, and that's part of why we wanted to use the ARPA money, um, because in a year and a half, if we don't have a housing incentive encumbered to somebody we'll need to spend it on something else so that's why we thought to to reduce that uh, that budget for these two uh, again council suggested ARPA projects uh, and we thought it was an appropriate use of money so that's why those are the two projects thank you <clears throat> any other discussion or questions yes go ahead such as hat box possibly we could use some of that money for hat box correct Yes, this is, um, and Jennifer did a very good job. I need to give her way more credit than I, than I do publicly. She's outstanding, but um, she made sure that we had lifted the restrictions on our use of those funds, and so we can use those uh, for things like a splash pad or a hat box or something else. All righty. So once again, on the 22nd, we will resume uh, this discussion and so citizens Feel free to contact your counselors if you have anything to discuss concerning our budget, and I'm sure that uh, this information is online. Yes, the the uh, the entire budget book that you have is available online to the general public. All right, thank you. Item number four, please. Consider approval of resolution number 2731, declaring a parcel of property, more particularly described in the resolution, as surplus to the needs of the city, and authorize the conveyance of said property or take other necessary action. Ms. Weezy. Good evening, Chairman and committee members. The city received an application from Mr. Logan Miller um, to purchase the property located just north of his property on G Street, that's 913 South G, and the parcel is zone C1 Local Commercial. It is about 4,500 square feet, which is smaller than our allowed buildable lot size. So for lots that size, under the buildable amount, we allow the adjoining property owners to request uh, purchase of those lots. So we have prepared the proper um, advertising notices and the city recommends approval. I'm happy to answer questions. Questions from Ms. Weezy? I have a motion. Move for, move for approval. I second it. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. <coughs> Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Perlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jerick Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number four passes. Item number five, please. Consider approval to accept the fiscal year 2020 2021 audit performed by Hood and Associates or take other necessary action. Mr. Reed. Yes, thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Mrs. Violet Kirkendall with Hood and Associates CPAs to present the uh, fiscal year 21 audit. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Violet Kirkendall. I'm the audit partner with Hood and Associates, and this was our firm's first year conducting an audit for the city of Muskogee, and this will be for fiscal <coughs> year 21, as stated. And um, I'm just going to give you some high points of the audit. Uh, 
Again, it was presented for fiscal year uh, 21. We conducted it as in accordance with auditing uh, standards generally accepted and government auditing standards. And that our, in our opinion, the financial statements present fa fairly in all material respects as of that date for your city. So um, again, the report is, is quite large. I don't know if you all have a copy of that or not, but we're going to, you know, I'm going to just kind of highlight in the essence of time is to go to uh, the internal control uh, findings. When we do an audit, we look at all of the aspects of the audit. We do testing of expenditures and uh, revenues and controls over assets and filing timelines, those kind of things. So um, as part of performing those tests that we do, um, we had some items that we, uh, we brought to the attention as findings for the current year. And uh, the first one uh, was controls over financial reporting, where the city was unable to produce financial statements for the fiscal year in June 30th, 2021, in accordance with GAAP in a timely manner. So usually the report is due to be presented to the state auditors by six months after the fiscal year. So that would have been December 31st of 2021. So, you know, we had some, uh, delays in the previous audit which caused that delay so that was a disclosure um, the filing with the state auditor again what there's a form 2643 that's required to be filed with that state uh, the audit report at that time which is, it, if you don't file it it holds up your gas tax those kind of things so that's that's another finding and the other fi the third finding was related to uh, reporting the data collection forms for the single audit for the federal audit monies that that the city receives and that is uh, was not timely uh, submitted as well because of the delay so um, those are the the major findings which a lot of those were findings for the previous year as well so we we did have some other findings that were corrected in the current year from fiscal year 21 from fiscal year 20 but those are the current year uh, findings and um i i have i can answer questions there's just a lot of data to go through to stand up and and go through every page with you all i normally do that but with this many pages and funds i i'm going to elect to have you all ask me questions if you want and then if you if you can't think of questions now i'm definitely can, you can contact me later to ask questions before the next meeting questions uh, i have some questions sure i was looking for my paper but anyway <laughs> it's a it's in the page 105 um dealing with the internal mm -hmm. uh, internal controls yeah there's a lot of uh concerns there in your findings if you read all of that um, <clears throat> what would be your recommendation to the city of Muskogee uh, that we do a better job in those areas that has been identified? Mm -hmm. Main, mainly these concerns are due to the timely, untimely filing. It's, it's related to, you know, the, the grant state that you have to have those reports uh, filed and submitted within a certain time period for their regulations. And those are mainly concerned with them. As part of performing our testing on those programs, everything was, was able to be found. We, we had definite cooperation from everyone. The documentation was located. These, these are mainly just internal control weaknesses that we felt were related to the reporting process of it, not to do with the actual conducting of the, the finances, the expenditures and, and receipts. So, Mr. Just, Miller. I'm sorry. So if, if I may, just to provide a little background, uh, when we talk about the timeliness, and it's good that um, uh, won't necessarily call as a witness, but Mr. Merrick and, <laughs> and Ms. Stratton are here. Um, you may recall our previous auditor fussed a lot about the City of Muskogee Foundation. And we fussed with them, and they spent about, literally about a year fussing with us about that. And when we finally got done with them, we said, we're not gonna fuss with y'all anymore. But, we, but when they got done, our new auditors were behind the eight ball. So I wanna thank them for, they, they're trying to play catch up because when, when the council said we want to move on from an auditor that understands how the foundation works, um, we, we had, our, uh, we were already past time to hire an auditor because the other auditor was so late. So we are going to be, uh, we're going to be playing catch up for a little while because of the, the issues that we had with the previous auditor, not understanding how the foundation works. And we've had a good relationship, I believe, 
uh, with your firm and and uh, they've already we've already got on the books to do the next audit and so we're uh, so when we talk about the timeliness that's that's kind of the cause and we we've talked about that cause in public meetings before but we want to just acknowledge that today that it is an error it is something we want to correct but it's not something that we can go back in time to correct Yes, as soon as we get the, the fiscal year 22 information from the accounting firm, which is Crawford & Associates, whenever they get theirs done, then we'll schedule immediately to get that, to get started. And we anticipate six to eight weeks before, once we get started to the end, to where we can present another year. And then hopefully we can be done with that before June 30th and start the next year on time and get it in by, you know, so we're hoping to like turn three audits around here this year. So, um, and it's, it's pretty extensive. I mean, on your side, our side, all sides around. So hopefully we can all come together and, and get that goals, the goals met. Questions, comments? Uh, yeah, I still, I mean, so if we just re, uh, I mean, construction in progress. Tammy, you got that? I mean, because when you read it, I understand you're saying, but some of this bring about, in my mind, a lot of great concerns, uh, especially being self-insured and work as comp, and uh, we know that we're getting these increases, and then we don't have, we're not, the city d did not have adequate procedures in place to ensure the construction and progress projects are being transferred timely to capital asset and depreciation is being recognized on these assets. That's a serious. That, that's that's pre that's in 2020. That's see at the top you see. Okay, 2020. That was previous years. Okay. Findings. That's not current year. That's the current year started on page 105, 106 and then 107 and then 108 starts the prior year findings because we have to we have to include we'll prior back. year with the current year just so that I mean that's part of the requirements for our, our presentation okay okay so even so, if I go to uh, 21 mm -hmm. uh, there's still some great concerns there um, during the year ending June 30th 2021 the city did not have the necessary personnel resources to maintain appropriate internal control and processes to eliminate accuracy and timely financial reports. Mm -hmm. uh, that's some serious language is, is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And so um, I take your report very seriously when I read these things mm -hmm. where it brings me to mind to even ask for a forensic audit uh, just to verify everything that you have said that this body is transparent <coughs> and, and we are accountable to the citizens for the money that they entrust us to do. So. Uh, that's why I'm asking all the questions, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, you know, well, related to the personnel that we, we deal with that provided information, they provide information to the CPA firm, and then we come in and audit that. But with this, the personnel that we dealt with were very knowledgeable and very forthcoming with anything that we had questions on or needs for. And I know also that we had, you know, the transition between treasurers in the middle of the time that we were doing our audit. So, you know, we had that changeover. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, f I feel like like you have a good personnel, you know, that we're working with. Okay. But but when you're when you're working in the past, you know, like the the current uh, personnel were working with past <coughs> records that they weren't even responsible for. So, you know, those those kind of things are what resulted, you know, in the delay, you know, of getting this, you know, all this stuff together. So I felt I feel like, you know, everybody, Mike and Dennis and everybody on the staff that I've worked with were very, you know, supportive and, you know, knowledgeable about the job that they're doing. So I feel like and like I said, I, I think, you know, as we progress for forward, I think things are going to look better to you. It's I just sure hope so. <laughs> Me yeah, too. That's the hope. Me <laughs> too. I, just some of this, the way that this is worded and the language makes it sound more concerning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, and you know we have to just kind of use a general overview of what took place. We can't say you know names and that kind of thing. All we can say is that this is a problem that caused the circumstances. You know we can't like go in and say identified specific things or people. You know so. Yeah. So have we got, have we put in place the internal controls to, so we don't have this going forward, Mike? So the, well, the timeliness we've talked about, I think we're going to have timeliness next year. 
and the net the 22 audit because the 22 audit should be done by now but we just finished the 21 today so they can't start the 21 to the 22 till we do the 21 so we're going to be playing catch up until we get the three done in one year we're going to see the timeliness issues i will um i will we take the recommendations that they make here seriously and make the corrections based off of what they say that's part of what we think a good auditor does is say here's what you can do better and then we go do better so I do think that we will be able to implement any changes that are suggested in this audit aside from turning back the clock unfortunately right, right. Mm -hmm. that's that's the difficulty that we've all had with this audit is is the timeliness of it so I and like I said I see going forward with the people that are involved in the in the whole scheme of thing I feel there's going to be improvement definite improvement you know and and getting current and getting the the findings you know eliminated eventually so you know of course we're gonna have findings in uh, this year but I, I feel like you know being that we if we can get it done quickly will they will be less they look look less bad I guess in the current year because they won't be you know as far behind as this report is you know right. this reports really behind so I mean you know the next year I mean there's a lot of people that are behind on their 22 at this point you know so it, it's just it's as you get more caught up, it's just going to be less, less big to you, so and big to us, you know, because we're going to be having, you know, improvement as we go along. So it's hard to make improvement, like like you're starting right now, and it's hard to go back and improve the things that are already passed. You know, you can't go back and say, okay, this is her recommendation, but we're still looking at 22 that's already passed. You know, so so it's just a it's just a catch up game, but we'll get there. You'll get there. Ms. Kirkendall, basically what you're having to do <clears throat> is help us to do cleanup for what wasn't done because the prior auditor basically gave us a hiccup on an empty stomach. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. I just have one more question and I'll be done. So when we talk about note receivables, are we doing that correctly? You know, because if you read on here on page 39, of this um, audit, mm -hmm. can you kind of you can read it so mm -hmm. that we all understand what's going on here? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem good practice to me, but I could be. It it was wrong. very. It's it's being done correctly as far as the the elimination of the of the receivable that we're receiving the month the annual payments on that and it's decreasing it. Um, you know, it's not it's not a you know one thing that we want to have happening, but but it is something that did happen. You know, as far as this note's receivable, and it was a special circumstance. It's not that anything was wrong with it; it just happened, and, and it's it it is being held correctly and eliminate, eliminated just as we're receiving the payments annually. So we're not receiving payments; we are actually forgiving the note. So that's mm -hmm. yeah. This is sitting to me. This is taxpayers' dollars mm -hmm. that we're moving around in that manner. Right, and I and I don't know of any other uh, way to way to to eliminate that off of your books other than to do it like we're doing on a scheduled amount. Just rather to than, give it. Yeah, yeah. We could do it all in one year, but it's going to be you know a financial hit to you in one year. To have you know work against your net pro you know net number and budget and that kind of thing so okay thank you mm -hmm. <coughs> any other questions or do we have a motion to accept this out of report Move for approval. second we have a motion and a second any further discussion mm -hmm. roll call please Erlen Boyati Craig yes Shirley Hilton Flannery yes Tracy Hoos yes. Tracy McGee Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number five passes. Item number six, please. Thank consider approval Thank to you. consider approval to accept the engineering services agreement from Cowan Group Engineering LLC for professional services for land survey, final design, bidding, and construction administration to complete CDBG waterline replacement project number 2023-008 in the amount of $67,448 
or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, uh, Chairman, this is uh, actually one of the items that the manager uh, addressed in his uh, My, my auctioneer, yeah. <laughs> when I was auctioning everything off there. Yeah, I got lost for words got there, and I don't usually really get lost for words. <laughs> but anyway, this is uh, to hire Cowan Group, and Cowan Group, as you know, did our water model, and they're doing the majority of our uh, engineering on all our water uh, projects right now. This is for them to uh, put together our CB, CDBG water line replacement project, so they'll be do the, doing the engineering on that. And uh, we're actually going to replace two lines that were identified in that water model study. Um, one is on Elgin Street. It's a six-inch line. It runs from 69 Highway to 15th Street. The other one is an eight-inch line that runs on uh, Cherokee Street, and it's going to run from Hancock to Peak Boulevard. So that's going to replace two existing water lines uh, using this. The uh, CBDG, just so you know, is a one-to-one -one match. Uh, we anticipate the total project to cost about $450,000. And again, this is just the engineering fees that we're uh, doing today. Um, the CD, CDBG will match, they're going to give two, $228,333, and we're going to match that. It's a one to one match, and then we'll have to pay for anything that's over and above uh, that $450 amount. Um, but we do recommend approval. It's a great project. These are uh, not just service lines. These are actually lines that uh, feed a majority of the area, and uh, they do need replaced. So we do recommend approval. Move for approval. That's that. And by the way, this was approved at Purchasing Committee. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Perlan Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. <coughs> Item number six passes. Item number seven, please. Consider approval of change order number one for package C Waterline Interconnects project number 2022003 with Cook Consulting in the amount of 166 thousand seven hundred and seventy five dollars to add a new water line to Sadler Elementary School or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, this uh, item was brought to us uh, by the Muskogee Public School System as they were doing renovations to the Sadler uh, <coughs> facility over on Altamont Street. And the issue was there wasn't enough pressure for the fire suppression system and the water lines that are around that facility could not be uh, incorporated into the project to supply that pressure so we do need to replace some water lines over there so we did get Cowan group to identify uh, the lines and what we're talking about is running a new 10 inch water line uh, from Tamaroa Street we're going to start at Tamaroa and 5th we're going to run a 10 inch water line uh, all the way to Howard uh, which is several uh, thousand feet then we're going to turn on Howard Street and run it from 5th Street to Altamont, which will bring an 8-inch line off of the 10 right up to the school system, which will supply adequate water for it. Uh, the reason we've got this on as a change order is there's a timing issue. We need to get this done so the school system uh, can get it done while school's out and then have, have it in place by the time they go back. Um, so we, we decided to add it as a change order to the Interconnect uh, C project, which is currently going on. And so you know what Interconnect C is. It's the uh, project that we're doing to tie all the lines in uh, as we're taking those 24-inch mains out of service. And you've seen that work going on on Main <coughs> Street if you've been watching. So anyway, uh, the original contract price, now this is not what you're uh, approving today. You're only approving the $166,000 change order. But the original contract price for Inter Inter Interconnect Package C is $3,749,280. This change order, again, is 166775 which brings our total price for uh, package C to $3,916,000, and $916,055. So do recommend approval. This was approved at purchasing. Be glad to answer any questions. Uh, been quite a few of us working on it, the Muskogee Public School System, uh, the fire department, and public works staff. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. <clears throat> I just want to thank the public works um, and staff for doing this because it really goes in line with the memorandum of understanding that we currently have 
with both of our public school districts that we would try to be partners with them on any projects as the uh, calendar years and fiscal years went on. And I think that uh, this goes nicely with that whole ideology that we'll partner with our districts on things like this when we need to. So thank you very much, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Carolyn Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor <coughs> Jared Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Uh, uh, item number seven passes. Item number eight, please. Consider approval to apply matching grant funds for the Roxy Theater, totaling $26,000, or take other necessary action. Ms. Weezy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The city of Muskogee has an approved matching grant fund in this year's budget to encourage applications from different groups and departments. This is another request from Roxy Theater. They've done some additional fundraising and have uh, some totaling 26,000 of their request. And the city does recommend approval. I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions for Ms. Weezy? Move for approval. I second it. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Roll call, please. Perlene Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number eight passes. Item number nine, please. Receive update on the spay and neuter assistance program and consider approval to receive donated funds for the months of January through April 2023 for $20 for the city's animal shelter sponsorship program and take other necessary action. Mr. Evans. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I want to give you guys an update on our spay and neuter assistance program. It's been a while since we've talked about that. It launched in November of 2021. I went back and pulled some records on that. And since we started, we've performed a little over 560 surgeries at our spay and neuter clinic there at the animal shelter. Uh, over 160 citizens uh, have taken advantage of our low cost spay and neuter program that we host every Thursday uh, with Dr. Sinar being our vet of record. Uh, because of the spay and neuter clinic being hosted at the animal shelter, we've also saved on manpower and transportation costs going back and forth to the vets that we used to because now we're doing it in-house. So all I have to do is literally go down the hallway and bring the animals into the uh, surgery clinic there and get them taken care of and right back they go after recovery. Uh, so for more information on the span neuter assistance program that we have, I tell our citizens to go to our uh, city webpage and visit the SNAP page under the animal control tab and uh, they can uh, learn more information about the span neuter program, how that works, how they can apply, how they can uh, get scheduled to come in and see us. But for the months of Janu January through April, excuse me, we did receive uh, $20 in donation to that SNAP program. And uh, staff does recommend approval to receive those donated funds. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Carolyn Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number nine passes. Item number 10, please. Consider approval for Muskogee Fire Department to purchase bunker gear in the quantities of 33 coats and 31 pants from Northern Safety in the total amount of $108,761 or take other necessary action. Chief Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, we're just trying to uh, get everyone, all firefighters, in a decent set of gear. Um, obviously, over the past few months, we've had a lot of structure fires. Obviously, that takes a toll on all of our gear. So over time, um, it, the wear and tear makes it inserviceable. Um, so with this purchase, we'll be able to get everybody in a decent set of gear um, and then also add to our inventory just in case a, a set goes down or a, a set gets burned. It's not like we can go to Walmart and buy a new set. You know, we, we, we have to, to wait. It takes about four months to get a new set. So we do recommend approval, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any additional questions? Roll call, please. You guys are doing a good job out there on all the fires. Thank you very much. Thank you. Roll call. Curly and Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number 10 passes and item <coughs> number 11, please. 
Consider approval to receive donated funds from the Cherokee Nation to be used for the purchase of equipment for the Muskogee Police Department in the amount of $8,000 or take other necessary action. Chief T. He. Chairman, members of the committee, this is a uh, donation from the Cherokee Nation through Councillor Mike Dobbins uh, to continue helping us with our physical fitness endeavors. Uh, be happy to answer any questions about it. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Perlin Ampoyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number 11 passes, and with that passing, that is our final item for Finance Committee. Welcome to tonight's Public Works Committee meeting, May 8th, 2023. Item number one, please. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of April 10th, 2023, or take other necessary action. Everybody's had time to review the minutes. We have a discussion or move a um, motion to approve. Move for approval. Second. Roll call, please. Carolyn Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of ordinance number 4196A, amending the City of Muskogee Code of Ordinances, Chapter 90, Zoning, Article 8, Residential Districts, by amending Section 90-08-04, Residential Districts, Design Standards, adding repealer, severability, and setting an effective date, or take other necessary action. Ms. Inlow. I'm going to kick it off for Laura. Thank you, Madam Chair. Recently, the state of Oklahoma uh, passed a law that restricted cities from restricting homeowners on design standards. So this is a procedural action to bring our code into compliance with state law. And I'll give Laura credit for finding that recent law change. So we simply want to bring our code into compliance. And um, the good thing is this will help with flexibility on design choices for homeowners and affordability. So the main thing this was affecting was exterior materials such as metal. So we think this will be a good thing, especially with the metal changes we've done recently with your approval on commercial buildings. So we're happy to answer any questions and staff recommends approval. Great. Do we have any questions for Ms. Beasy? Madam Chair. Yes. I just want to say I'm thankful that the state sees the wisdom of the city um, <laughs> and that they follow our lead for what we did because we had already adopted policies uh, to make it more flexible for businesses um, to be able to do what they're doing now with the metal restrictions that we eliminated. I also hope that we get to the point where <clears throat> we can look at the possibility of residents in residential areas having a easier opportunity to construct uh, homes on a barn to medium style uh, that will have fewer restrictions as well. So thank you uh, both for this work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion? Or do we have a motion? A motion to approval. approval. Did we not have a presentation? No, there was no slideshow. Okay, I'm sorry. It's pretty basic. Thank you. Roll call. I'm sorry, who made the second? Mm -hmm. Me Several. Yeah. Several. You can put me down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Perlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Uh, Consider approval of a final plat for the Sleepy Traveler edition brought by Landon and Casey Holman or take other necessary action. Ms. Laura. Property is located on sorry located on um, Highway 69, just south of Hancock. Uh, they are wanting to put in a tra uh, sorry tra a um, RV park, and it's going to be a temporary stay, uh, vacation type uh, type situation, similar to camping. Uh, we have it under the hotel and lodging on our use on our use chart. That's what we determined it would be closest to. The current zoning is uh, C2. The BOA has approved their special exception to have this 
uh, business to have the RV park. And so now they are getting their plat approved. And Planning Commission has approved the plat, and so now it is coming to you. And the staff recommends approval as well. Thank you, Laura. Oh, and oh, this is the lot that it will look like. And this is a street view mm. of the property. And this is their layout of their of their slots for the RVs. And this zone right here, this is a floodplain zone, but it is not right here. So they are, and any anything any issues with drainage will be addressed during the public works when they get ready to <coughs> put down their slots and their driveways for their RVs. I move for approval. Second. Okay, any more discussion? Madam Chair. Yes. Just for the public watching, BOE is Board of Adjustments. Oh, thank you. So that they know that, because somebody will call and say that the Board of Adjustments, they don't know that BOE is, is that, so thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call, please. Herlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number three passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval of a preliminary plat for the Warrior Edition by Wallace Designs developed by the Cherokee Nation or take other necessary action. Ms. Lauren. Oh, this property is located <coughs> on Hancock, right at Turner. Uh, they, they were rezoned. You probably see this before me with the Warrior Edition. They got through with, the, with their rezoning. So it is now zoned uh, Residential 1. They're going to be putting in housing for uh, their uh, their citizens. And this is the uh, the layout. This is their plat. Now, a preliminary plat will typically have contours, which will show elevations. I did not put that on your slideshow because it makes it very difficult to see um, the plat itself. But I believe I had, and this is the location as far as the aerial. Here we have Hancock, and there's Turner. And it's the spot right in there. I have a harder time drawing with the computer, so I apologize. You're good. A little bit quicker. <laughs> and then uh, this is our future land use map, so you have an idea that residential one, when y'all approve the zoning, of course, it is part of our future land use plan. Thank you, Laura. Any questions, or do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Okay. Roll call. Shirley Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. <coughs> item number four passes. Item number five, please. Consider approval of amended City Council Policy 3-2-2, Pay Administration, or take other necessary action. Ms. Eaton. Good evening. <clears throat> um, the pay administration policy was implemented in May of 2017, which included specific information for pay, sorry, for pay administration, paychecks, interim checks, pay periods, work weeks, rates of pay, pay changes, payment for overtime and comp time, longevity pay, out of classification pay, callback pay, and standby pay. The 2022-2023 AFSCME contract allows for out of classification pay in the event of a non-exempt employee working for an exempt employee to begin after four consecutive working hours in the out of classification assignment. Whereas city council policy 3-2-2 requires the non-exempt employee to work 16 consecutive hours before out of classification payment begins. This amends the out of, out of classification section to match the minimum requirement of four hours when a non-exempt employee works for an exempt as reflected in the 2022-2023 AFSCME contract. Um, staff recommends approval, and I'm happy to ask, answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Eaton. Do we have any questions? Move for approval. Glad to see the change. Second. Yes. Okay. Roll call, please. Herlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. <coughs> Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. <coughs> Item number five passes. Item number six, please. Consider approval to authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute an agreement with Spatco Energy, excuse me, Energy Solutions to engineer and design a new central fueling station for the city of Muskogee or take other necessary action. Mr. Swepson. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. It's been a long night for y'all, so I'll try to keep this brief but give you a good background on it. 
Um, as you well know, for several years, we've been budgeting to replace an aging fuel station that we have where we do all of our fueling for our vehicles and equipment. Uh, we are finally to the point to where we're kind of ready to get the wheels in motion on this, which is getting to be very exciting for us. So um, we uh, sent out RFQs, uh, request for qualifications for design and engineering services. Those were sent out to about a dozen uh, companies and firms. Uh, it was also published in the paper. All requirements were met. Uh, we received one submittal back. Upon reviewing that submittal, we felt that it uh, held quite a bit of merit to it, so we moved forward with calling references, um, bring it before the committee, selection committee. We had them come in for an oral presentation. I'm proud to, present, uh, to say that they scored very high, all within the upper lows to mid 90s, uh, possible points out of 100. They did a very, very lengthy presentation, so I only included a couple of slides in your information, gave you a little bit of background on their company. Uh, they've been in business for over 85 years, employ over 500 employees. Over 200 of those are service techs that perform maintenance after installation. So they're a complete company that cradle to grave, if you will. Um, they have four engineers on staff. Three of those fours are right here in uh, our backyard in Little Rock, Arkansas. They cover over a dozen states, have 25 locations in the south here for us. So uh, we uh, were very impressed with their abilities and their services that they offered as a whole. So we uh, decided to move forward with just the one uh, that we felt very comfortable with that. I did talk to some other companies uh, why they didn't present a submittal. Some just did not have engineering people on staff that they would have to go out and get that done. They were more of just the installation side of things. Others were that our project, while it's large to us, it's small to them. This particular company does a lot of convenience stores as well as municipalities. Uh, they do um, like Loves, Travel Stops, the Jiffy Trips. Uh, Circle K's, so they uh, are a very broad company with a lot of experience. Um, I'm going to try to keep it brief, so I'm going to end it there. Um, with all that information, staff recommends that uh, you authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract for the engineering and design services for a new fueling station. Be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Robert. I'm excited about that. Do yeah, have any great questions? work. That sounds like a very, mm -hmm. you know, well put together and we found somebody good to do this. I move for approval. Second. Okay, roll call. Perlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. <coughs> Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number six passes. Item number seven, please. Consider approval to authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute an agreement with GH2 to design the City of Muskogee Civic Center HVAC remodel project to include removing and replacing the chillers and boilers or take other necessary action. Ms. Jennifer. Thank you, Madam Chair. In March, staff sent out requests for qualifications, much like Robert's uh, project and timing, and this is for the Civic Center HVAC remodel. Um, we will uh, recommend the highest scoring firm. So we also had a committee that met and reviewed the responses. We had two vendors provide responses. We invited both of them to come in for presentations. They both did very well. So we tallied up the scores and felt confident recommending the highest scoring and best fit for the project, which is GH2. The city has worked with GH2 on multiple projects at city facilities. And um, as far as timing, we hope to have the contract ready in June. The design will be over the summer. And then the boilers, which provide the heat, we hope to have in place for the fall before the cold winter. And then the chillers to be done before the spring and summer of next year so the timing looks good as well i'm happy to answer any questions we do recommend approval thank you miss jennifer and do we have any questions move for approval and i'm happy to see that we're taking that stance to uh, get the civic center uh, in line i second it roll call 
Carolyn Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number seven <coughs> passes. Item number eight, please. Discuss changes to the process for residential sanitation cart services for disabled citizens or take other necessary action. Councilor McGee. Uh, yes, this is my agenda item. I bring this before the council tonight because we had a situation where our, our elder wasn't able to uh, take out <coughs> uh, her trash in, any longer. And um, you have to do a medical statement and if you don't get the medical statement back in in a year's time, then you get your, your court picked up. And in her situation, they picked her card up and I just thought that um, we could better align that medical statement. Most times, if you're dealing with the disabled and the elder, they're not going to pretty much get any better where they can take their trash down to the curve. And so if we can uh, maybe um, uh, do the medical statement that will stand on file for three to five years before you have to do another one, because I think that will give them time enough to make the adjustment and... Um, uh, that was my concern. Councilor, that would be easy to do. We could uh, amend that to put it to two or three years. That would be very easy if councils or the committee's decision is that. Why did we do the six months? Do you know? Yes, I can talk about that really quick. The six months is for the temporary and it is a year for permanent. And the reason that we have done that is to ensure that carts don't get left behind. We do change them out as service, as uh, customers change with the service address, but we do have 219 of these out there, which is quite a few to keep uh, on track, and we don't want any to get missed. Trash carts aren't necessarily easy to buy. Um, but an example of how one may get left behind is a property owner may pass away and a younger different family member or a non-disabled family member may move into that house and assume the same service and that cart would stay there so what we want to do is have this to more efficiently audit our system and to kind of allow it to audit itself thank you i, I want to add one more thing there is a uh, caveat in that uh, ordinance that says the public works director or designee uh, can uh, override that slip and i have done that on many many occasions um, and the one that uh, slipped by me is the one that you got, and I just happened to be off that day. But we usually approve those. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank the Public Works Committee for uh, stepping up and getting the job done. Thank you. And to Mike as well. Thank you. So we're talking about what's, what's the time, what's the new change that's being recommended? Just extend the medical uh, uh, statement. That way they're not doing it every year because most people, you know, if you're 89. Permanent the permanent yeah just for the yeah. permanent yes extended that's what I was asking we asking for one year two years three years what's the most we'll, we'll do what the pleasure is <coughs> we recognize most applications that I feel like this usually has like temporary six months long-term three year long-term five year I'm on almost even like handicap parking is like a temporary then up to five years so there's for medical personnel to fill it out just to have one extra box to choose from and be an issue Three years? I'm just trying to figure out what we I was saying three to five years three or whatever. To five, I would suggest um, the five-year window because that's what the handicap sticker is and, you know, just for some consistency. <coughs> so I would suggest the five-year window, Mike. We can make that change. Yeah. Second. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. So do we need a roll call on that? So, yes. Yeah, so we can yes. take that as direction yes. to staff, okay. but if... Uh, our attorney so desires we're absolutely happy to to do that as well question Mike for the residents that have already done this for 2023 their five-year window would start then right yes okay we'll make sure of that all right thanks Trina thank you for clarifying mm -hmm. do we need a motion or can they just take it as direction as that you're not changing the ordinance. They, what we're doing is changing the yeah, time. Yeah, they can take it as direction as now. I they would can draw, take it as direct, no, I direction as now. Okay. We don't need a motion on that. Then. Okay. I would draw my second. Any more discussion? <coughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Item number nine, please. 
Consider approval to authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute an agreement with Clean Earth for conducting the household hazardous waste pollutant collection, transportation, and disposal event for the city of Muskogee or take other necessary action. Mr. Mike Stewart. Yes, uh, the next uh, 9, 10, 11, the next three items are going to be handled by Abby Wright and Samantha, uh, who's in our stormwater division and pretreatment. Uh, Abby's going to uh, present this. This is the household hazardous waste event that we do, which has grown and gotten more and more popular. And uh, we're now looking at uh, using another uh, contractor. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, um, the city of Muskogee advertised and solicited for and received three proposals from Clean Earth, Heritage Environmental, and Tredebi. Um, we had a selection committee uh, consisting of public work staff who reviewed the proposals for these three companies. Um, and then we chose to compare costs based on uh, past events and Clean Earth had the lowest overall cost and excellent references when we called for references. And so um, Clean Earth's proposal is complete, responsive, and meets the requirements for the city. And I'd like to recommend approval, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Abby. Do we have any questions for Ms. Abby? Mm -hmm. I move for approval. Second. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Perlin Boyardi Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. <coughs> Item number nine passes. Item number 10, please. Received the City of Muskogee Annual Phase Two Stormwater Report for permitted MS4s submitted to ODEQ on April 28th, 2023, and take other necessary action. Ms. Abby. Good evening again, or I'm still up here, so I don't know why I said that, but um, I send a report every year um, to DQ for our stormwater program, and we have a lot of requirements under that. Um, I'm just doing a summary of this in this PowerPoint. Um, I did, um, we sent it off um, the 28th, and um, I, there's a copy uptown, and I have a copy if anybody's more interested in the details of it. So our DEQ requirements is we're supposed to prepare a plan to prevent pollutants from entering our storm drains. And this plan includes six minimum control measures with best management practices to reduce pollution. Um, we're supposed to do public education and involvement. Um, there's a, they combined those. Uh, in the past, they were uh, two separate ones, but they combined them together. They added industrial stormwater runoff, which we are not that's not required yet in Muskogee. Um, illicit discharge detection and elimination, construction site stormwater runoff control, post-construction management and new development and redevelopment, and pollution prevention and good housekeeping for MS4 operations. So I'm gonna go each one of, over each one of those really quickly. For public education, um, we try to educate the public about our stormwater program. Uh, last year we had a stormwater booth at our home and garden show, or that's at the, uh, it's normally hosted by Oki Country, and it's at the mall normally, or their new um, uh, facility out at Half Ox. We also did a landscaping for water quality workshop, uh, and then we had Facebook posts about stormwater-funded events that the citizens could participate in. <coughs> um, so for public involvement, the city held lots of events um, about the, um, the Azalea cleanup, um, two household pollutant collection events in June and October, and then recycling at our recycle center. And we had, this is the cleanup from last year. So Sam's gonna give a presentation a little bit about the cleanup from this year. But last year we had 640 volunteers participate in the cleanup. And these are pictures from Bank First. And then here's our household pollutant events. Um, these are getting more popular as Mike said. Um, we have more residents coming to them. We collect um, household waste, chemicals, um, oils, anything that you can't throw away in your normal trash. So we like to provide this to our citizens. It helps them not pour stuff down drains or dump stuff outside. So um, we had 394 total participants for that. We collected 12,000 pounds of electronics. We also have a tire event where we take it to a tire recycler and we collected about 12,000 of those. Um, we have a recycling program drop-off center and it's open six days a week, Monday through Saturday, eight to five. And we had 20,000, about 20,000 residents use that service last year. And we collect everything that's listed there. Um, our program, we're also supposed to look for and try to um, 
track illicit discharges, and an illicit discharge is anything that should not go down a storm drain. Um, examples of this could be chemicals and oils, if there's illegal dumping, um, illegal connections to um, storm drains, uh, sewer line or manhole bypasses, uh, grass clippings in the street, and it also requires, or our sewer department um, inspects and repairs and replaces sewer line, which helps with this program too. Um, Abby, hold it on that slide yeah. just for a second. That's 12th and Martin Luther King, and that's that grate that continually plugs up, and you can see where the resident right. there was putting gra grass into the street, which has got that grate plugged up, and mm -hmm. they went out and uh, uh, issued citations and warnings on that, so that's how that helps keep that clean. Yeah, we mostly do warnings at first. Uh, if it comes more of an issue, we can do more than that, but it does help with the maintenance department of keeping them cleaned. Hmm. Um, another part of a list of discharge and detection um, and elimination program, we're supposed to do dry weather field screening. So that's, we have to go out um, at um, outfalls, which are um, storm drain pipes where it leads to water bodies and see if there's any evidence of pollution. Um, these are examples from a class that I went to. Um, so those aren't pictures from Muskogee, but if you saw green stuff coming out of a pipe, you'd want to check, check it down and see where it was coming from and oh, no. stop that source. That's not good. So, but that's a program that we're re required to do as well. Uh, we're required to do construction site runoff control. Um, we did 214 inspections last year, and I was, I was really proud of that. Um, mud and dirt and chemicals that leave the site uh, can fill or uh, plug up our storm drains as well so that's important um, we require them to have like best management practices like the silt fence that's in the picture so post-construction management um, requires any best management practices uh, to put in place after the project is complete an example of this would be like detention or retention ponds which make sure you keep the maintenance up on them make sure the outfalls on them are clear and are maintained um, we're also as part of this program supposed to review our codes to help um, promote low impact development and green infrastructure and low end impact development describes land planning and engineering design approach that manages stormwater runoff by mimicking natural processes of evaporation and um, absorption into the ground. Green infrastructure is similar and is designed to filter and absorb storm water where it falls. Um, there's examples include rain gardens, green roofs, pervious pavement, and bioswales. Um, there's some local ones in Tulsa, so I wanted to do some pictures of places that were kind of close. Um, the Tulsa Federal Building and then the Tulsa Zoo has a couple projects, and we're looking to doing a project too for public works. And finally, um, pollution prevention, well, not finally, I've got two more slides, I'm sorry. Pollution prevention, good housekeeping. Um, we're just required to try to keep city work areas clean um, and cities clean. So our street sweeping program helps with that. Um, that crew did 587 curb miles. Um, and then also our street crew does cleaning and maintenance of storm drains and channels, so that's important. And then we have a litter crew and they picked up 1525 bag, 15,000 bags of trash. Um, and we also inspect city facilities for stormwater compliance, so try to recommend things that they could do, best management practices to help with the environment. And we had 26 of those last year. Um, our permit was updated in 21, and it had um, requirements that we had to implement. And so some of those new requirements were updating our best management practices, which I've had meetings with staff to discuss ways that we can do that. And then um, in updating our stormwater management plan, uh, another thing that it re requires is a total maximum daily load um, program for impaired water bodies. And that means, um, I had my notes. It's, a, it's the amount of water or amount of a pollutant that water body can handle. So um, our, our water bodies uh, in the Arkansas River and Cootie Creek are impaired for bacteria. So we're, we're gonna have to implement a sampling and monitoring program to help reduce bacteria in those water bodies. And now I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Wright. Do we have any questions? Great job. Thank you for all that you do. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Item number 11, please. Receive a report on the Azalea cleanup event and take other necessary action. This is Samantha. She's new with the Stormwater Division within the past year, a little bit over a year, but she's doing a great job. She's do helping me with all the construction inspections, and she likes doing the Azalea cleanup, and she's a go-getter, and so she's going to do this presentation. <laughs> 
Good evening. <laughs> Uh, my name is Samantha Henderson. I, I just actually hit my year last month, this last month, so uh, I'm enjoying this position, and thank you for allowing me to come here and present our statistics from our Azalea cleanup. I was very excited. My goal was to hit over 1,000 volunteers, which we did. So but let me don't, I don't get ahead of myself here. The Azalea cleanup, most of you guys know, this is a yearly event. It's designed to clean up the city for all of our visitors. It's going to come for the Azalea Festival in April. Um, I have a slideshow here for you. Uh, our event this year was held March 22nd through 25th. It is organized through the City of Muskogee Public Works Department Stormwater Division. We had 70 groups sign up for the cleanup this year. 63 of those 70 actually participated. That is an awesome turnout, especially considering we had rain within those four days as well. In those 63 groups, we had over 1,000 volunteers. And again, that was my goal was to hit 1,000 and we hit a little bit more, so I was very happy about that. These are actually some pictures that they sent in, some of the volunteers sent in for us. We had a little bit of help with advertising. I want to give a special <laughs> thanks to Mayor Coleman for coming down in, uh, to the uh, Muskogee Public Library along with some of the students there and uh, did a little bit of advertising because it's important to get the word out to recruit volunteers, and it takes a lot to do that, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails and stuff like that. Um, we had a lot of help with that uh, through various people and uh, special thanks to Tara as well because she does a lot of my uh, social media and stuff like that along with Mayor Coleman this year. Again, thank you, Mayor. We collected about 624 bags of trash. These again are photographs that our volunteers have sent in. We had almost 500 tires collected. These were collected at the material yard when, when people came through for trash, and uh, our city workers stacked them very nicely, which made it very easy for our, the RTR environmental people to come down and collect those tires. It took two loads for them to collect all those tires. That was a lot of tires. Um, we also had our brush and limb site open during our four-day event, and at the brush and limb site, we had 187 loads taken, which is quite a bit. And we also contract with waste management to have the landfill open for free dump days during this event. And we had 642 loads taken to the landfill. Again, we collect at, at the material yard where we collected the tire. We also allow residents to bring trash during those four days event, four day events. We had 194 loads brought in and the city crews cleaned up 13 illegal dump sites. We cleaned 16 of our local parks up. Uh, King Park specifically was cleaned up by the Oklahoma School for the Blind and they sent this picture in for us. We cleaned almost five miles of the Centennial Trail, various groups did, and also we had several school groups <coughs> come in and, and volunteer to clean up their school grounds and some of the surrounding areas. We had several sponsors this year, so I wanted to specifically point each one of those out. OG&E provided us uh, $300 to buy uh, grabbers for the volunteers to use to pick up trash. Keep Oklahoma Beautiful and the Oklahoma Great American Cleanup provided the reflective vest, the gloves, and the trash bags for our volunteers to use. The City of Muskogee, through the Stormwater Division, we, spent, we bought 300 more grabbers for the volunteers to use. A more beautiful Muskogee purchased 100 grabbers for us, and they also helped us to uh, hand out supplies during those four days and to recruit more volunteers. And then Leisure Way Laundry was gracious enough to actually take and wash all of those vests and gloves for us for free. And now they're, they're all ready to use next year, so we're good to go for next year. So I was excited about that. So the biggest thank you is for the volunteers. There was, uh, again, a lot of people that went out to pick up trash, and that, that says a lot about Muskogee and everybody coming in to clean Muskogee up because we want it to look nice for all the volunteer, I mean, the visitors that's going to come and, and visit Muskogee when we have a lot of visitors to come during the Azalea Festival. And then a special thank you for all the city workers. I am impressed with the Public Works Department and all, how all those divisions pull together to make this event run so smooth, and it did. It was very successful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again to our staff. And number 12, please. Consider approval of the recommendation by the City of Muskogee Foundation Board of Directors to reappoint John Barton to the City of Muskogee Foundation Board, serving a six-year term beginning August 1, 2023, and ending July 31, 2029, or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, I want to give uh, special um, consideration to uh, our representatives of the foundation, uh, Mayor Stratton, 
and uh, Frank Merrick for joining us uh, for the lengthy evening. And I've, and I know Mayor, uh, former Mayor Stratton has spent a lot of time in these council chambers and maybe we're getting flashbacks, but I appreciate <laughs> for these next three items, hopefully only good memories, right? Uh, it, is, it is our duty to, uh, to, uh, take the re to consider the recommendations of the uh, Foundation Nominating Committee. The Foundation Board has, I believe, approved these three. I, was, I think I was in the meeting and voted as well. Um, and Frank may make a presentation on this and the next items. I'll turn the mic over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Miller, um, John's been on the board, off the board. We had a term expire. He filled that uh, unexpired term, and the bylaws allow for him to have a full term at the end of that unexpired term, and so he was elected to do that. Kim Walton was elected to replace one of your council members. Frank, we do, we do have to deal with them one at a time. Okay, I'll shut up. I, I do think it'd be appropriate to, to have a motion for Mr. Barton at this time. Move for approval. Second. Okay, do we have any more discussion? I had a bro. Oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to take this time to, I've been dealing with a lot of concerns from the community, uh, talking about the city foundation and, 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 and the disappointment of them not funding the programs or had a reduction of uh, the budget. Um, <clears throat> in this, Mr. John uh, Borden, the question was asked, why um, extended six-year term, and you just kind of hit on it, um, that he, he didn't have a complete term, so now he's finishing and wanted to go six uh, more years. And um, I don't have your bylaws, but I would like to have a copy of the bylaws, and I think the public should have that information. They're, they're available on our website. On your website, okay. Um, but I wanted to address that because the question was opposed to me and uh, really to maybe some of the other council here, I'm not for sure, that when the city, we want people on the committee that is pro-city uh, of Muskogee and that when the council up here needs something, we're really not asking you for money uh, that we don't need, we really need uh, help. And that's what we thought the foundation was there for, for the betterment of the citizens here in Muskogee. So I just wanted to say that. And the other part is that why would I vote for Mr. Borton if he voted down the money? So I just think that we need to explain to the public maybe why the, the funds were cut so that people have an understanding. Thank and you. I would love to take that opportunity. Thank you for asking that. Um, I want to start by maybe re reviewing the history and um, the processes that we go through whenever we are receiving a grant request, you know that we do this twice a year. There is a, a grant cycle that is for summer activities. There is a grant primary grant cycle that is for the rest of the year. Um, those grant requests are given to a group of citizen committees. So those are made up of citizens who have made application. They're all Muskogee citizens who then vet those applications. Um, those grant applications are available online. Last year, every person who asked to be on a committee was placed on a committee. Nobody was denied that opportunity. Okay. Those grants are looked at in an education committee, in a quality of life committee, in an economic development committee, and in a health and wellness. And let me tell you something, if you've ever sat in those groups, and I know some of you have, um, they well vet every grant request. Um, every grant request has given attention, is given um, a chance to defend itself and explain what they're going to do. That obligation, as you've mentioned, to take the citizens' money so seriously, mm -hmm. um, I think you would see that in each of those committees. They then make recommendations to the foundation board. Um, okay. So just know that the, the actual work of the foundation is done by citizens of this town. Um, we are currently in the cycle right now, so this year's requests have not been decided one way or the other. Those committees are vetting them okay. right now. Um, I would say that because in the fall, we acknowledge that because of the market was so troubled for over the last few years, that we were going to have a smaller new grant budget than usual mm -hmm. that did not account for the eight million that we've already committed to to the citizens of Muskogee mm -hmm. and our as you saw in the pre uh, presentations this evening there's lots of foundation money in move mm -hmm. for the citizens 
uh, but that new grant budget, because we knew it was going to be a little smaller this year, um, I tried to put the word out in meetings that guys, you know, we're just not going to have that new grant money like we've had before. And, and there have been several entities, among which was this council, who stepped up to the plate and said, okay, we know we have other ways we can do this, so we're going to do that this year instead of asking the foundation. Muskogee Public Schools was one of those as well, mm -hmm. and we're very appreciative of that. Um, I think the market's better. You know, we cross our fingers, we live in a crazy world, and hopefully it'll stay better so that we can continue to do that level of funding. Um, Mr. Barton is specifically brings a great deal of history and financial knowledge, and I think that's what we've tried so hard to do on that board, mm -hmm. is identify people with expertises that we needed to help make those decisions. Certainly Mr. Barton is one of them. Thank Did you. I help? Oh, that helped. Thank you. But the ones that you and I talked about earlier mm -hmm. specifically did not ask for money. Okay. Foundation can't deny if they don't ask. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stratton. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Perlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number 12 passes. Item number 13, please. Consider approval of the recommendation by the City of Muskogee Foundation Board of Directors, <clears throat> excuse me, to appoint Kim Walton, replacing Perlin Boyati Craig, to serve a six year term beginning August 1, 2023, and ending July 31, 2029, or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Boyati Craig for serving uh, in a non council capacity. She was appointed as a citizen before she was elected, and I think that uh, goes, uh, says a lot about her commitment to the community, and we're happy that, that uh, she has served and has been willing to serve. And, uh, the foundation nominating committee has uh, asked to appoint Kim Walton to uh, to replace her. I'm happy to answer any questions about Miss Walton, but a real quick bio: she and her husband moved here in '97. She's the executive director of patient care at and head of nursing at St. Francis Hospital, and she and her husband have two grown children. And prior to her active work at the hospital, they were very involved in the farmer's market and other community activities. Thank you. Move, move. Yes, okay. Okay. Roll call. Perlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. <coughs> Item number 13 passes. Item number 14, please. Consider approval of the recommendation by the City of Muskogee Foundation Board of Directors reappointing Rand Stratton to serve as board chair for a one-year term beginning August 1, 2023 and ending July 31, 2024, or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, uh, I would like to recognize uh, former Mayor Stratton as being the queen of thankless jobs, because being, <laughs> being the chair of the foundation and being, being the mayor are two volunteer jobs that are a lot of hard work and we appreciate you being willing to do both of those over your career in public service and um, she has been nominated and I do think it would be appropriate to have a motion to appoint her as, to serve as chair. I move for approval. Second. Okay. Ren does a great job and we appreciate you, Ren. Yes, yes, we do. Roll call, please. Perlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number 14 passes. There are no citizens wishing to speak, so this concludes this meeting. We'll to order the special call agenda of the Muskogee City Council for May 8, 2023. Roll call. <clears throat> Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Jamie Stout. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Jones. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Here. Perlin Boyati Craig. Here. Thank you. Item number one. Pursuant to Section 307, B3, and C11, <clears throat> Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to confer on matters pertaining to economic development, including the possible sale of real property within the northwest quadrant of the city of Muskogee, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. We will now consider a motion to go into executive session. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to go into executive session. Roll call. 
Perlan Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The motion passes. We will now convene into executive session. All of those who are not part of that session, please excuse yourself at this time. We will now reconvene from executive session. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Jones. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Here. Perlin Boyati Craig. Here. Ms. Bodenhammer. Thank you, Mayor. Pursuant to Section 307B3 and C11, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, Council did convene an executive session to confer on matters pertaining to economic development including the possible sale of real property within the northwest quadrant of the city of Muskogee. And at this time, a proper motion would be to authorize the negotiation and execution of a sale of the real property within the northwest quadrant of the city of Muskogee. We will entertain a motion to that effect. Move for approval. I second it. We have a motion and a second on the item presented by Mrs. Boltenhammer. Roll call. Perlin Boyati Craig. Yes. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, that was our final item for tonight, and we are adjourned.